So we've used piezo discs to make contact mics, which is a bit backwards because they're manufactured to make sound, not to pick up sound. Um, if we want to make a wider range of sounds in a single beep, there's a little trick that we can do to turn this into what's called a transducer, a device for uh, um, affixing to other materials to make what you could call speaker objects. Um, in addition to the piezo disc, we'll need a small amplifier. It has to be an amplifier that has an external speaker jack on it, such as this little Radio Shack amp. Um, if the amplifier says that it has a headphone jack, uh, this will not work. Headphones are 200 ohm load or so, a loudspeaker is 8 ohms. This is tedious and boring, but this has to do with the next step of this project. We need a little device called an audio output transformer. To the best of my knowledge, the only place you can get one is at Radio Shack. I don't believe anyone has actually used this device for its intended purpose for at least 40 years. But it makes a wonderful little audio jack for getting a signal up to a very high voltage, which is what we need in order to turn this into a transducer. Now, the output transformer will have wires coming out of two sides. One side will be designated as being 8 ohms, the other side something like 1,000 to 10,000 ohms. In the case of the Radio Shack one, the two wires are on the 8 ohm side and the three wires are on the high impedance or 1,000 ohm side. Now, to do this project, we need to connect audio into the amplifier. There it goes. And we'll play a CD into here. I came up at a certain time in the music business when, um, well, if I had been a, a couple years earlier or and a I'll couple years a later, I wouldn't be in the music business at all. It's like I came in through the window when um, students were hungry for new ideas. I put the jack into the output, put the plug into the output jack section. Put the plug into the output jack. Then we make two clip leads attach to the hot and the ground of that plug. And we connect them to the two wires on the 8 ohm side of the transformer. It doesn't matter which one you connect to which. Like this. Then you take two clip leads and you connect them to the outer wires on the secondary, the high impedance side of this transformer. In this case, the wires are green and blue. And you connect one lead to one lead on the piezo disc and one lead to the other. And if you've done it right, the piezo disc will start to vibrate. So, this is acting like a small, very tinny speaker, okay? But if we press it against something, like, for example, a piece of cardboard. They were sorry for having been a part of suppressing my career and that they had letters from the Johnson White House. Make a cardboard speaker. Or we can make a speaker out of bubble pack. Plastic pack is very good. Or attach it to a cigar box. And each material you place it on ends up changing the sound in a different way. If you want to make it stick a little better, you can put a little clip on it. Once we've clamped the piezo disc onto an object to turn it into a loudspeaker, uh, we can add a contact mic to the same object and transform this piece of metal into a form of a filter. So, I take a contact mic, I clamp it on here, and then I plug it into another amp.
there's pop songs, and a lot of them about they're about great love songs. You know, I love them so much. What am I going to do with that kind of love dilemma song? And in this way, we can use physical materials as filters for sound, as well as using them as loudspeakers. Okay, here we have the transducer and uh, piezo disc contact mic on just a piece of discarded plastic, um, which is very interesting when you work with it, even though it looks like the trashiest thing in the world. If I play some sound through it, oh, it's very beautiful. Um, I think that it acts as a bit of a filter, but when you bend it, uh, it seems to change the filtering of the sound based on the tension of the plastic sound. Or, you know, so it's almost like a, um, like a physical wall. This is, frankly, a mess and quite unstable. You know? But uh, you can take the same transformer here and you can solder a plug on the 8 ohm side that would go into your amplifier output and a little female jack onto the 1 kilo ohm side. And then if you make your piezo disc contact mics with the appropriate size jack, you can decide on a whim if it's going to be used as a contact mic to pick up the sound or whether you are going to plug it into this transformer dongle to use as a transducer instead. And this will be somewhat more stable in terms of making connections you can work with. When we take a piezo disc and add the transformer, turn it into a transducer, with which we can resonate physical objects. We can then apply the contact mic to the object so that that thing is not just a loudspeaker radiating sound into the room, but it can actually be used as an analog signal processor. Um, one can apply similar technologies to transduce various materials for the purpose of signal processing. And one thing that's very easy to do is make a facsimile of a traditional spring reverb, but with all sorts of weird variables that you normally don't have access to. To do that, we tear out the transformer and the piezo disc, and we just plug a loudspeaker into an amp so that when I play sound, it will come out of this. But I'm now going to take a slinky, admittedly a rather puny one, and I'm going to take a piece of electrical tape and I'm going to tape one end of the slinky down into the cone of the speaker. Don't do this with a speaker you love because it can tear the paper when you go to remove it. So there we are. I play some sound and you can hear that the sound is coming out of the speaker. But for the next stage, I take a contact mic and I clamp it on to the other end of the slinky. Guess what? Guess what? All right, Billy, where's the fire? And as I stretch it, so it acts like a spring reverb, and you can hear it when we tap it like that. And if I turn the soundtrack on and off, it sort of rings it. So, just so you can see what the sound is like without the distraction of the acoustic sound coming out of the loudspeaker, I'm going to plug the contact mic directly into the mixer we're feeding the camera with, and you'll just hear the contact mic. Another cheap form of transducer for turning physical objects into speakers or filters uh, is the motor. And small motors like these, the vibrators from cell phones and pagers, uh, happen to have almost exactly the same impedance as a loudspeaker. So 
one can add a little plug to the end, plug it into the output of your amp. And here I have a piece of metal with a contact mic on it. Now I'm going to play sound into this. It's very quiet, but if I place it against the metal, So we can take the little motor as a transducer and we can plug it in as an external speaker for my alarm clock, put it in the shot glass, set ourselves up and wake up to a gentler sound.